Olé. Ha <laughs> ha. Hi, I'm Xander. I don't know why I'm going up to the mic. Um, it's, it's the mic there. Uh, I used to have a really good studio set up, um, but since I've had my boy, I've not even had a studio. He now, the studio is now the nursery, isn't it? Uh, so, hi, I'm Xander. I can't remember where I'm looking as well. The camera's there. <clears throat> but you tend to look at the screen, not the camera. I'll try it. There's a dot. I'll look at the dot. Okay, uh, anyway. Hi, I'm Xander, GhostCon UK director, CEO, whatever you want to call it. That's me. Hi. And it came up in my memories today of seeing Ghost in Nottingham Rock City 2015 Meliora tour. Oh, Black to the Future tour. Eight years today. That's where it all started for me. But who am I? Why, why am I doing this? Someone's going to do Ghost Con, aren't they? Why am I doing it? Uh, well, here's my cup of tea. Always make sure you've got a drink. Get your larynx watered. Probably not even the right word. Three sugars in my tea. Thank you. Um, I'm not an addict to tea, just sugar. But coffee, I don't have any. Anyway, I do this a lot. So, talking about Ghost Con, why am I doing this? I thought today is as good as day any, really. We're doing the, the Christmas calendar advent uh, thing with Bobby Jig. So why not? It's some content, right? And I said I'm going to do some stuff. Really, you need to introduce the person behind it, which is me. So I'm introducing me. Hi. So I'm Xander. That's my public name because I don't want people I don't know adding me on Facebook and stuff. But if you want to follow me personally on any stuff which is public, it's Yellow Xander, Xander of an X. Like Buffy. Yes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Don't have a cough button on this. Uh, so this is going out, I've got the video, we'll do that on YouTube. And I'm going to have it on Mixcloud as well for podcasts with music, I'll have the tracks in. Can't do that on YouTube because it means more editing and hassle and licensing and blah, 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 blah. Can't be asked for that. Someone else can do that. We're going to get other people involved, aren't we? We'll talk about that. <laughs> See, I, 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 I go off point. <laughs> I get that from my mum, I think. Uh, right, so what are we talking about? Why, why, why Ghost Con and why me? Who am I? Well, I'm just a bit of a, a mongrel of all sorts, jack of no no trades, really. Jack of all, master of none, that's the one, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Do Total Rock Radio. Less involved now as I used to be. Used to be very highly involved. I still do one hour show. I do the chart show. And some days on Total Rock, also podcasts. Uh, Total Rock Online, to go find that, totalrock.com. You can go listen to that and I play a bit of Ghost at the end of the... The hour because I have some time left, so why wouldn't I? <laughs> Sorry to people who ask me to play other stuff, but you know. yeah, so we are affiliated GhostCon with Total Rock, our official media outlet. Yes, I done professionally, if you like. I've done a bit of promoting, I've done some local gigs in the area in Colville, Northwest Leicestershire, England, UK. And I've done a few festivals helping out. I actually did once a range. A three-day festival, two stages, which is pretty cool. I booked all the bands, planned it all out. That was that's pretty cool. So that's been a dream of mine is to do a festival. It wasn't my festival though, so I don't feel I've accomplished that yet. One day, I almost did it actually, and then the outbreak happened. Yay! It'll happen one day, but in the meantime, we've got GhostCon. It's almost well, it is a, a, a convention is a festival, really, isn't it? And that's the thing about this event. It's not an all day. It's not a gig. There's a lot of stuff going on because there's a lot of stuff about Ghost. So uh, I'm in the uh, UK tribute band to Ghost, Pope Stars. We could do a whole other episode on that. I did do a Pope cast for Pope Stars and lost it. I don't know where it is. It's online somewhere. Can't even remember where. I thought it was on Mixcloud. Can't find it there. That's not Soundcloud. Oh, maybe it's on Soundcloud. I don't know. Maybe you find it. Pop it in the comments. <laughs> yeah, so I'll have to do that. We'll, we'll come cover Pope Stars another time. For now, we'll just talk about why me doing Ghost Con. Uh, so yeah, I've done Pope Stars and I have all these ideas, stuff we can do, places we can go and build it bigger and make much more of a show. Not to copy Ghost, just to make a really good show. Obviously, the tribute band is playing the songs by Ghost, but we say we're not Ghost, we're Pope Stars. We play the songs written by Ghost, okay? So we're not imitating for the copywriters and meta, thank you. Yep, loads of ideas and plans we can do. And 
the ghost fandom is a very modern fandom. If you look at I Maiden fans and Kiss fans, obviously a lot older, but from a time when the internet didn't exist, you had fanzines, so they were paper fan made magazines. Kiss fan club, or fans rather, I guess, I'm not sure really who put it together, had the Kiss Expo. And just all my ideas eventually culminated with, well, let's have a ghost expo. Let's have a ghost convention. How can we do that? What can we do? There's so much going on with the fans in the community. The costumes help, the changing costumes help. If you look at Kiss, and didn't they all have the same costume? The entire time, unless they change members. And even some of the new members wore the costumes of who they replaced. Uh, whereas ghosts don't say there's lots of costume making, there's lots of cosplay, there's lots of fan-made characters, people making up their own characters. There's storylines, official, there's storylines that people like to make up. There's jewellery, there's artwork, a hell of a lot of artwork, both official and fan-based. A lot of posters, a hell of a lot of t-shirts, oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm not going to catalogue that, but if you go to Ghosty, uh, Ghost double E, Ghost T, uh, see that? Uh, our friend in Wales there, I can't remember if he's a dot .com or if he's a dot .co dot .uk, but there's only one Ghosty anyway, so you can go check out that. It's an almost 100%, uh, it's got to be like 98, 99% complete catalogue of every Ghost t-shirt. Wowza. Let's go check that out for t-shirts. A friend of ours. Um, so there's just so much to give out there. And I thought we can put it all together. We can all come together and do it. Celebrate more than just having a performance of the music. We can celebrate everything. Uh, loads of ideas, and then lockdown happened. Oh, and so I, and then had to think of a way to get this out, get it rolling. And also, do it before someone else does, because I've been talking to people, and although you say, you know, don't say anything, you know, down the pub, someone was like, oh yeah, and someone said about this, and they've, they've not been told not to say anything, and you know, it spreads, especially in an online community, so I needed to get going, I couldn't hang about before someone stole the idea, right? <laughs> uh, obviously it's not something that could be copyrighted, but being the first helps. Um, and being best is what you've got to work out, right? So here we are. We've we've got a ghost con. Struggled a lot with venues, surprisingly. Venues just didn't get it. They didn't understand. So, so, uh, some people don't actually understand. Okay, fair enough. You don't really know what it's about. So it is a convention for ghosts. It is literally what the name says in the UK. I wanted to specify UK because... Well, you know, ghosts might want to have their own, maybe. Someone might want to do one in another country, and I think it just obviously says where it is, but it, well, I, I just think it helps, right? It allows others to do the same too. Um, I'm not, it's not like I can copyright it and stop anyone else doing it. It'd be great if other people do it. It'd be great if I can, I do it myself, abroad. You know, ghost France, ghost uh, con Germany. Why not? One day, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I mean, Ghost Con, you've got to keep the name simple, right? <laughs> as long as it's clear, it's fan organised, it's unofficial, it's okay, all right? And I'm not using Ghost Logo, so I went with the Moon Cross, which is what the T in Ghost Logo is inspired by. That's the name of the company, if anyone gets confused. You know, companies can be different to the name of the event. So the company is Moon Cross, you know, we're all registered. It's all coach hack, don't worry about that. Uh, so, yeah, I struggled with venues and time was ticking away. And I'd already started talking to people and we ended up going to a cave. A mother fudging cave, right? Called the devil's ass. Sister Auxilium found it. And, well, it's got to be done, hasn't it? So, got Pope Star's headline, of course, right? And we had World 16 play. Yeah, that went really well. It was really fun getting all that gear up the hill because there's no road in. It honestly is a cave in the hills. 
in the middle of England, Derbyshire, Castleton. A devil's arse. Called devil's arse because when the air is moving and the water's flowing, it can sound like it's farting, travelling through the valley. <laughs> True story. It's real. It's not made up. It really is called the devil's arse. I only changed names to Pete Cavan when Queen Victoria visited because they thought it might be a bit rude. <laughs> so that, that's why it's happened, why I've created GhostCon. Just because I'm not even the most absorbed into the fandom as well. There's other people who are more so. I just um, thought it was a natural question for me to do from Pope Stars into a convention. Do it right now. I've never even been to a convention. I've seen it. In America, obviously, there's a load of sci-fi conventions, comic conventions happening a lot in the UK now. And I like dressing up, which helps, obviously, being in the Ghost Tribute. <laughs> it's, it's a good excuse for people to dress up who don't normally dress up, who aren't that dedicated, but do want to enjoy it a bit. So it's welcome to lots of people who are either dedicated or on the peripheral, or not even that much dedicated, but just fancy something a little bit different. So I can't just have a ghost tribute play where I'm having other bands play. They need to either be in costume, have a stage show, uh, also need to have a good show anyway. You know, lots of energy, performance, interaction. Oh, Satanic. I haven't got a purely Satanic band. There's some out there who cover it. There's a few out there, a bit black metal. For me, that's fine. I like black metal. I like modern black metal most. But not everyone else does. So we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, right? Keep, if you're signed up to the Ghost Con UK forum group on Facebook, that's where I'm having chatter to discuss stuff. Because it's not just for me. It's for the fans. It's for everyone to enjoy. So there's no point in me just doing what I want or just doing what I think you want. Obviously, I need to ask you what you would like. It's, it's, in a way, it's almost like a family where... We can, I say, I say we, it's, it's only me, <laughs> it's only me doing this. Uh, I, I need your feedback of what you'd like there, otherwise it's not going to be any fun for you if there's nothing you're interested in. Uh, so have I covered, have I, have I gone off on tangents? Why am I doing it? I didn't, yeah, why am I doing it? My credentials, so I've done Total Rock, done some gig organising. Never been to a convention though. Well, I've got an idea of what goes on, I see people's photos. So uh, I guess that's the feedback from the first convention. People said it was great. They liked everything that was there and they were surprised how much there was there. Which is really cool. I'm really happy about that, obviously. Personally, I still want double the amount of stuff that was there this time. And next time, I want more. We're at the... My plan was to move around the country so everyone can experience it because I wouldn't expect people to travel from all the corners to wherever it is in the country. I wanted to move around, give everyone that opportunity. What I didn't expect was just how much setup logistically there was to do. I appreciated that. Even from my experiences of setting up stuff similar to this. Also with a venue probably not quite getting it, even if they understand. And even the corporation kind of got it. They still didn't know what was going on. And fit, actually fitting everything in, you, you don't know until it's there. It's not like Lego where you know that block will go on that block just like that. There's variances. There's, you know. uh, so it's actually, it was, I'm not going to say it was hard work figuring it out or anything like that. It was just a lot more than I expected. So we're actually going to stay at the corporation in Sheffield. It's central in the country. It's right by the M1. Near to the M56, Corporation is near to the station as well, it's only a 10 minute walk. So it's got good links, a couple of hours to major cities. But, kudos to the people who travelled, right? In the UK there was people from Bournemouth and Exeter, Plymouth, Norwich, London, uh, Black Blackpool, Preston. Sorry, I'm not sure how much further north. Oh no, there's someone from Newcastle as well, definitely. Kent. Uh, I'm really impressed by that. I thought it would be a two hour maximum periphery of Sheffield. It wasn't as way further. Not only that, we had someone from Finland and someone from Denmark. What? That is incredible. Round of applause to those guys. 
All right, so yeah, people travelled, so it's fine. I think it's okay. People who really want to come will come. If not, we have the Nameless Bull. Hey, so that's an extravagant gig. It's not the convention. It is different. It's not the convention. It's a very opulent gig. I don't want it to be a normal gig. Hope stars, maybe a support, and that's it. It's, no, it's something more. And they're running, alternately, every six months. So the next venue, Court and Horses. Court and Horses? Cart and Horses. <laughs> oh, baby brain. Oh, those who know. Court and, Court and Horses, done it again. Horton Castle. No, what? Cart and Horses. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> uh, in terms of an extravagant venue, not so much, actually. It's a the gigging venue is a rock bar. It's very nice, though. Very uh, clean and very well decorated and looked after, maintained. But it's the home of Iron Maiden. So that kind of makes it pretty cool, right? I hope Sal's going to learn the Iron Maiden song. Don't get your hopes up, but I'm trying, right? Uh, so that, that's kind of what makes it extreme. They have food there, so I thought we'd go with an eat and greet. So that makes it, you know, pushing the boundaries. As I say, people don't quite get it. So actually trying to get venues for these things is a bit more difficult. What I am really trying hard to do is get a church. And also trying to get venues to have matinees so young people can come. We get a lot of requests for young kids to come, of course. So I'm working here. I'm working on churches. I'm working on matinees. That, so that's my plan with the um, Nameless Ball. I almost go to say Ghoul's Ball, which is our friends in America. It's a ritual. There is, they are working with a ghost tribute now as well. They are online, of course. Ghoul's Ball and Phantasm events. Uh, loads of stalls wanted to do more for the market for the next convention. Do I want to have other tributes other than Pope Sars play? Well, what I'll say is, and not in a pretentious way, if you get better than Pope Stars, then I'll consider it. Pope Stars is the bar, if you like, at least for the UK. <laughs> so there is other UK tributes out there. You know, I'll put on, I'll say it now, I'll put on the best tribute. So whichever tribute that is, be the one that plays. That means Pope Sars always got to work hard to be the best. We don't say we're the best, we say we're the original because we were the first. <laughs> there are other tributes out there which before they even had a gig said they were the UK's number one tribute to Ghost. Ah, you got to prove it though, right? Kind of actions mean more than words. Would I put on two ghost tributes? Absolutely. My original plan for the first... Well, it wasn't even a convention at this point. My original plan for my first event, well, probably only event, was to have five tributes. Each in a different costume, each doing a different album. That would have been epic. Just going to get a venue and it didn't happen in the end. But everyone was up for it. So I was certainly interested in having more than one tribute play. But only if that's what the fandom would want. Stars have got a line for it. It's got to be right, the right moment. Currently, that's not next year. So don't get your hopes up just yet. But there could be something close to that happening. Teaser. Teaser. Oh, yeah, it's teaser. So it's something similar to two ghost bands playing at the same event. I keep looking up at the mic here. <laughs> Oh, it's because my screen's down here. Mike's up there. <laughs> Where are we at? We're at 20 minutes. I've not even introduced any songs for the audio version of this. And we're talking because it was the 8th anniversary of me first properly seeing Ghost. How did I get onto, into Ghost? I'd seen Ghost twice at download. Just kind of casually. I knew who they were. The first one, 2010, was it? No, 2011. Uh, I hadn't heard anything. Just heard of them. Uh, I went to see them. And I was like, oh, what? get that at all. It was second stage at download as well, I think. And then the second time I heard them and they were on the third stage. I was waiting for the band after them, which I think was periphery. I was just sort of decided to chat with people at the side of the tent uh, whilst they were on not paying attention. And I should have, really. Ideal time to see uh, the class classic, traditional, original, it, what is the original lineup of Ghosts? Uh, the old school lineup. There we go. We'll go with old school because that covers a few of the members that have gone past. Old school being pre, uh, pre masked, masked. 
shall we say? Oh yes, I saw them a couple times to download and they didn't really do much for me. Nothing wrong with admitting that. So it wasn't until Meliora came out, I was decorating our office and listening on Spotify for free. I pay for that. And trying to find something to listen to and ghost popped into my head. I thought, oh yeah, let's just give that a go. And Meliora came on. It just wasn't clicking, it wasn't clicking. And then I couldn't think of something else to play afterwards, so I played it again on my phone. I don't know why, I just thought, well, because sometimes, well, I know sometimes it takes two or three listens to actually get in the zone for it. So I cycled along from work and spirit started, and I think, yeah, it's got a good rhythm. You know, things can be different when you're driving, a good driving rhythm. Yeah, the spirit kind of it worked for me. Oh, say. Changes in patterns with the drum beats as well. It worked. But then, Pinnacle to the Pit came on. That bass. Ding, ding, ding. Oh, the strings on that. Oh. oh. I mean, the bass strings, right? That sounded beefy. And then the drum pattern, when that kicked in. Whoa, wait, what? That's different. Okay. Huh. Right. It's leading on the snare. And the beat. And that, that hooked me, that bass riff. I'm not a bassist, but I like bass as a, a drummer. I'm naturally drawn to bass, so that's that's what, that helped me. So then I started listening to it, and then just everything fell into place. You know, Majesty, and then how heavy Cerise is. The uh, uh, last tra track, uh, blah, 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 blah. was it Juice Cooper? Uh, I'll whisper that, because I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so then I was hooked. And then I got offered an interview with Ghost from a label. So playing Rock City, uh, working at Total Rock, I uh, interview a lot of bands touring through, a lot of unsigned bands as well. Generally I do three shows a week, I'll be interviewing five, six bands a week, in touring season obviously, which it was, it was December, it's just after my birthday. Oh yeah, I'd like to see them actually, I've been listening to a new album, I quite like it. Yeah, I'll do an interview with them, thank you getting dressed, ready to go to the bus, I'm nodding because the bus stops over there, <laughs> uh, ready to go to the interview which was probably like four o'clock or something, maybe three o'clock, <laughs> uh, put my coat on and I get a message that the interview's been cancelled, they've run out of time, oh are you kidding me, <laughs> received that just in time, just before I left, and uh, just checked, I was Still be on the guest list. Oh, sorry, there's no space left. Like, wait, what? How How can I not be on the guest list? What had happened was, right, tour manager had also worked for Cradle of Filth and my friend Richard Shaw, who lives down the road in Hina, he got my guest pass. The mother hovered. <laughs> oh, so <laughs> not only did the interview get... Um, cancelled my guest pass got given away as well i didn't mind though i bought a ticket that was rock city has a balcony that wasn't even open mount ticket i don't know why i wasn't on the guest list because it's not as if it was sold out i don't know what capacity would have been the capacity for main room in rock city i think is 2600 uh, so only if it's over a certain amount will they open the balcony and it wasn't uh it wasn't empty but you know it was breathable you could walk around which is nice, I like it. Nice and intimate, small stage. And this was different. Not only did I know some of the songs now, but also the costumes changed, which I didn't know. And it hadn't clicked either, because I hadn't really properly paid attention to them. So when they're on stage, I thought, oh, these look, these look better than I remembered. Now this was still the, it was the uh, tradi traditional, right? What did I say? Ah, oh, I forgot the word I said that was going to be. It was the pre-masked, unmasked lineup anyway. So it had Martin Persner band for sure they behave differently or at least you could see them better without the cloaks on because they had the tunics and no hoods the way the ghouls moved papa was quite not as static as he used to be he moved around a lot more now i can remember thinking well at least he's moving around now and the ghouls they were very energetic but how the three of them the guitars stand together Papa went to stage this side, 
Dougals together went there and they would be in time. And then they'd switch around, Papa would go to that side and the three of them would stand there and I loved it. And then they'd split off and go in different ways and then they'd regroup and stand together like just in front of the keyboards or just next to the drummer. And if the keyboardist did a solo, they lined up diagonally to him and they looked at him and they were playing to him. It was almost like they were supporting, they were encouraging and they'd do the same to the drummer or they'd do the same around the Papa. It was so mesmerizing because the masks have the same expression, expressionless, it's the same. It was like a three-headed hydra. Is that the right word? Hydra? Is that hydra? And they would whiz off, almost like fireworks, to do their own thing. And then they'd regroup. And then when one guitarist did a solo, the other two guitars were next to him. And they were supporting each other and they would lead together. And then they would be solo and then they would be together. Oh, I just loved them. And it wasn't choreographed. 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 <laughs> Try saying that after a few whiskeys. Oh, to an extent, some of them. I mean, obviously, they'd say, okay, in this song at this point, let's all go over there. It's choreographed in terms of positioning because you need to know where you're going. But it wasn't, you know, we do this dance and we do that dance and we all move like that. No, it wasn't like that. It was all very natural. It's just mesmerizing, completely mesmerizing. And then at one point, Puffer takes his hat off. At this point, Puffer wasn't known. He wasn't real. Nobody knew who he was. And I thought his hat had fallen off. And I was, I was shocked. I was like, oh, his, hat, his hat's fallen off. People are going to work out who he is. And, but he didn't seem to mind. I was like, people are going to recognise him. They're going to work it out. Well, I didn't realise he'd deliberately taken his, his hat off and rode. <laughs> I just thought it fell off. <laughs> well, I should be all over the news tomorrow. People guess who the pupper is. <laughs> no, it's part of the act. It's all right. <laughs> so I... I have no idea who he is. Because <laughs> you didn't know it was a mask either. It looks like that was actually him just with face paint on. <laughs> oh, there we go. So, mm. so that show, that's what got me addicted. I guess, I guess listening hooked me in and the show really caught me. And it moved on from there. They headlined Bloodstock the following year. Which point I'd... I see, at that show, by the way, in Nottingham, I was stood with Rich. And I'd had this idea of playing my favourite albums live. And for each album, I used different musicians from the local scene. And each song, different singers. <clears throat> so I have the same musicians for, for the whole gig, but just different singers throughout. All from different bands to bring the community together. And it worked, it was great. Talking with Rich, would you be interested? Yes. Uh, you know, here's some of my favourite albums, blah, 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 says System of a Down. Oh, well, I'm already in a System of a Down tribute band. Oh, well, there we go. So that was also the genesis, if you like, of Pope Stars, because eventually after, well, at Bloodstock, I've seen them for the second time, which I noticed they, was, they weren't quite the same. Turns out it was a different lineup because this was on the Pope Star tour. Uh, so this is when the... Classic Gauls had left and it was the Pope Star. Sod it. I don't care if they're a new band, I don't care if this album is new. I'm playing this album. This album is incredible. I stood watching with a local guitarist, he was up for it. Oh, I know my mate Rich is up for it because he likes the idea of playing the albums and we were both at Ghost, he'll do it. So that's that's how Pope Stars got started. That's where I got addicted. So since then, so I've done nine rituals. What are you guys up to? It's not competition. Don't worry if you've only been to a few, and you don't need to boast and think you're almighty because you've been to 20. You know, you go to what you can. It's not a competition. You do what you can do. A Pope Stars is a good alternative. That's a cheaper alternative if you can't manage a ghost gig. We're just a stopgap. Where am I up to? I've, I've rambled. We're, we're up to about 35 minutes, and that's not including any music, right? So I'm going to slot in some music. What songs am I going to play? I'll play my favourite. Obviously, I'm slotting these songs in post-edit. So... My favourite songs of Ghost, well, From the Pinnacle is the song that did it for me, so that's certainly my top ten. Pinnacle, Zombie Queen is a banger, just an absolute banger. Oh. And then when I discovered Zenith, 
seen it, seen it, well, seen it. I think that's been underproduced, to be honest. Because it was a leftover track, I don't think it's as highly polished as it could have been. I think they could do a better job of that. How cool would that be? Spillways, that's, that's a banger, that's so good to play live. And Majesty, I think, Majesty, okay, that's five. Uh, cover, what cover? Now, do you want, hmm. He's got cold. Pet Shop Boys and Eurythmix, definitely the best two. But I also like Here Comes the Song. First time I heard that, I thought it was rubbish. I didn't give it time. But when you do actually listen to that all the way through, it's actually pretty good. So I think I'll go with Here Comes the Song. What's that, six? Ish. First album, I didn't like that at first. That took a few years, actually. I, I didn't listen to it for years and years. I didn't like it. And I've actually, I gave it another chance and or you idiot. <laughs> what have you been missing? Elizabeth. Satan prayer. <sighs> That'd be hard. Okay, I'm just gonna have to have a listen, post edit and work one out and slot it in here. But the square hammer's pretty good, isn't it? Well I think that I think that covers it. Does that cover everything? I mean I've, I've rambled on for a stupid amount of time about why Ghostcon exists. Probably hasn't been entertaining to listen to. I'm just a person talking about about ghosts. We'll end it there. I'll, in other episodes, we'll talk about, I don't know, we'll talk about Pope Styles. And other, other GhostCon stuff, we're going to talk loads of, so, so many variables you could talk about. So we could talk to artists, we can talk to musicians, maybe we can get some interviews with musicians. I've been owed an interview with Priest for, I don't know how long now, two years, I think. I've been owed an interview with Tobias for eight years now. Oh yeah, I was saying where I've seen them, yeah, Varken, that was good. At midnight. Oh, an hour set at midnight was fantastic it was just after pre-pool had been released now headlining second stage at download finally i had to cancel appearance at download so i've seen not in rock city not in marina also went to newcastle arena to see them and to birmingham arena to see them. so nine times i missed them at somersphere for some reason already uh so yeah more ramblings of boring shizzle from me you, you probably couldn't give a rat's ass about right <laughs> okay, so until another time, we'll see you later. Uh, tickets at ghostcon.uk. Bye bye.